I don't want to waste your time, so there won't be an intro. In this week's Pro League match between Vitality and BDS, Vitality showed that gods can bleed. But what's interesting is not that they can bleed, but rather how you can make them bleed. And I think that coming into this game, Vitality had a really well thought out game plan that allowed them to abuse the weaknesses of BDS. Before we get to that though, I want to quickly let you know that if you watch this video within the first few hours after release, then you can catch me live on stream right now. Link is in the description. Back to Vitality's game plan though. Any idea on what it might be about? If you guessed utility, you are correct. In a way, Vitality's game plan already starts during the map veto process, because by picking Clubhouse, you end up playing one of the most utility heavy maps in the entire game. And then it continues in the operator ban phase, because you decide to A, ban Thatcher, knowing that BDS bans Maverick, and B, you leave Kate open, which combined means that there's almost unlimited potential for defensive utility play. And that really is the name of the game here, and I want to illustrate that using three different rounds. First up, we have Vitality's second church defense. We start the round around the two minute mark, because this is when BDS finished taking map control. Now your objective is of course to get the hatches open, but with a Kate playing below Moto Hatch, it's actually not that easy. With Thatcher you can just double EMP the hatch here and deny Kate that way, but with Kali that obviously doesn't work. And so BDS loses the first Ibana charge to a Kate trick. But at the same time, they do know what they're supposed to be doing here. You set your sledge up at top mainstairs, and that allows you to roll a nade all the way through into Moto. The problem is just that Vitality was expecting that, which meant that they caught one nade with an ADS. A nade that is now potentially missing when it comes to getting Kitchen Hatch open. Sadly, you can't see it on screen, but while Hibana was busy opening Moto Hatch, Ace tried to open Kitchen Hatch, but he got impact tricked by Melusi. And now we're in a situation with 30 something seconds left and Kitchen Hatch being closed, which means that BDS has to come up with something new here. And this situation is very obviously defender favored. In theory, that is. In practice, BDS wins the round without losing a single player. Well, maybe Vitality has more luck in the next round. This time we are on Cash CCTV, and based on the operator lineup from Vitality, you can already tell what's going to happen here. At this point in time, BDS has control of the construction and master side of the map, and their next objective is of course to open Cash Wall. So they use a Kelly charge on the wall, but they only get a mute jammer, not whatever is electrifying that wall. And now the alarm bells in your head should be ringing. What is actually on that wall, and how do we get rid of it? This nade by Rafael is actually part of the solution, although not in the way that he used it in, but this second Kelly charge on the wall is certainly not a part of the solution. The secret here is two K charges that are placed here and here, which means that they can't be hit by Kelly. So the idea is to use nades to get rid of the K charges. And I think here it kind of dawns on BDS, but then they don't have the presence of mind to check for ADS first. And this means that both CC wall and cash wall are going to stay closed. And in a 4v3 situation, this is very obviously defender favored. In theory, that is. In practice, BDS wins the round without losing another player. Well, maybe Vitality has more luck in the next round. Now we are on a gym defense. And as you can see, with Mutant Bandit, Vitality is still playing around the idea of making it as difficult as possible to breach a wall. What you usually do on this attack is you open CC wall, because that allows you to control CC, obviously. But the reason the attackers need CC control is because that allows them to play outside the gym and master windows. And if you can play outside the gym window, you can easily deny a banner trick on hot tub wall. But this mute jammer actually leads to BDS ignoring CC, and instead they focus solely on getting hot tub wall open. Now, I'm not quite sure how the early stun and smoke factor into getting this wall open when Hibana with flashbangs is right next to you, but bottom line is that BDS does eventually get the wall open. But now we get to the important part. Take a look at Valk. She rotates into Jim and picks off Hibana for free. And the interesting thing about this play is that it can be traced back all the way to Hibana not opening CC wall at the start. Because the way you prevent this kind of play is by having a player outside Jim window. But if BDS had a player outside gym window right now, then there's a good chance that Jaeger and CC just kills him. A Kelly on strip roof is usually not enough to prevent that. 
The only way of guaranteeing that you can play on Gym Window is opening CC Ball, which BDS decided to skip. And now it's looking kind of rough for BDS. Sure, it's a 4v4, but you don't have Bathroom Wall open and you don't really have an obvious play here. So this situation is very obviously defender favored. In theory, that is. In practice, nah, just kidding. This time Vitality actually manages to convert the advantage. It was kind of close though. So now you just saw three rounds in which Vitality made really good use of their utility and forced BDS into making mistakes. To be fair, it was nothing we've never seen before, but still, these rounds illustrate the value of having a cohesive game plan coming into a match. In the first round, Vitality had a nice Kate and Impact trick going to keep Kitchen Edge closed. In the second round, Vitality had a nice Kate setup on Cash Wall, which BDS couldn't deal with. And in the last round, Vitality made good use of the fact that BDS wasn't controlling CC. And sure, Vitality only won one of those rounds, but that's not what this video is about. And it's also not what strategy is about. Strategy is about setting yourself up for success. You still need to claim that success by actually winning gunfights. But ideally, your strategy made it so that these gunfights are in your favor. And Vitality certainly accomplished that with the way that they were using their utility. The problem is just that they were playing against BDS. And against BDS, a 70-30 gunfight might as well be a 50-50 gunfight. And that's how you sometimes lose positions in which you are the clear favorite. That's just how Rainbow works. But we should still praise the game plan that Vitality had coming into this game. BDS is known to be weak when it comes to utility, so you take them to club, which is a very utility heavy map. And then you also ban Thatcher and leave Kate up, making it even more utility focused. And then you also play setups with Mute, Kate and Bandit to really make this map all about utility. And arguably it worked, they did manage to take points off of BDS after all. So yeah, I enjoyed this game a lot actually. But alright, that's it for the video. If you enjoyed it, you should consider checking out my stream, link is in the description. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something new. Thanks for watching.